what they go do with me now I'm still a talk of the town Don't need assistance, I'm hooking them down We turn the smiles into frowns Gang hop out, then we clear in the crowd Fuck is these real niggas dissing Like they meant to get put on the team Why the fuck is these real niggas dissing Like you niggas ain't get hit on scene What's up y'all, you tune in to another talk of the town interview It's your girl Brianna, and who am I here with? She blue this is a very long anticipated interview because yeah. you were supposed to come yeah. so long ago, Mr. Youngest in Charge. Yeah, a minute ago. We yeah. have so much stuff to cover, but thank you for stopping by. No problem. So let's get started. So tell us for the people who don't know, like where are you from? Um, I'm from the Bronx, New oh. York. Okay. And walk us through like what it was like growing up in the Bronx. Um, it's really how you make it like you could grow up good well me personally i grew up good you know mm -hmm. i had a mom that fed me but um it really depends on how you make your life really in the bronx like you okay could, you could live problem free but it's really about how you go about your life so you said that you you grew up good yeah so what would you say was like the turning point for um, well, I'm I'm still a good person. Okay. <laughs> I'm still a good kid. <laughs> but um like I guess you could say like the rap beef, um, that just thing you know, things happen in the streets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how would you compare because you're still in the process of growing up. Yeah. Like how would you compare what you've experienced so far at your age to like an average sixteen year old who's um up? I don't know. It really depends on where you're from, I feel like. Okay, so let's say a 16-year-old growing up in the Bronx, living an average, everyday they life. Might, they might experience some of the same things I experience, just mm -hmm. either they in it or not, you know? They either the cause of the problem or not, but they most likely experience what I'm experiencing in the Bronx right now. And what's that? <laughs> it's different. <laughs> it's a lot going on. I mean, you at Talk of the Town, so we got to talk about it. All right, so... Like, I know that I've heard, like, growing up, you had dreams of being a biochemist. Mm -hmm. Is that still something that you're interested in? Yes. And why that? Um. Well, I got inspired from a movie. I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. um, it's called The Martian. Like, basically, he was on Mars, and he had to, like, make plants to survive and shit. And after that, I was just, like, biochemistry looked, seemed cool. Mm -hmm. like, trying to make plants so you could survive. That's what we need in life. You know? mm -hmm. Certain shit that goes on. So, Making medicine and things like that. So it's more than just plants. It's not just plants. but Of course. Bios, anything with life. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so, and that's still something that you're interested in? Yes. You in school right now? Yeah. Okay, so how is it balancing, like, school, your career, and then, like, being outside? How is that? Um, it's a time and place for everything. So it's a time for school. It's a time to be outside. It's a time for my career. Do you feel like you do a good job of balancing everything? Um, yeah, unless I get lazy, you know, then I just like be home all day, sleep. But mm -hmm. other than that, yeah, I think I, you know, get up, do what I gotta do. Okay, so let's talk. Let's talk about like when you started getting lit. Like, what moment did you realize like music was your thing? Um, I feel like I'm still realizing that. I wouldn't say like no. I, I guess music is my thing, but it's not really my thing. It's something I do for fun. Okay. So, do you... Like, I would ahead. make a career off of it if it happened, but, like, I, well, it's already a career right now, but, like, that's not something I want to do my whole life. Okay. Yeah. All right, so two follow-up questions with that. So, when you started making music, what, like, you... It was just, like, let me just see what I could do. Yeah, How did that start? It was, like, um, more like a, um, like... Growing up, making music in school and things like that, I was like, fuck it, let me see what I could do mm -hmm. in a real studio and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I just, the first videos I dropped didn't really do so well. It was just like, keep trying and see what goes on. If it works, it works. So it what was the do. one that popped off for you? Um, gotta think. I think I dropped. I guess I started buzzing more after... I started, I dropped two solos, then I went, did my first feature, K Flock. Mm -hmm. Then I did the, the Be Love song, then Shy K. Around that time, I was like, all right, mm -hmm. I can keep doing this. 
Mm-hmm. And I mean, we already touched on it gets real crazy in the Bronx and the, yeah. the music that you make reflects the shit that be going down. So I'm curious yeah. to know, like, what was your mom's reaction to the music that you were making? How did she receive um, that? She supports me with anything I do in my life. OK, that's what's up. But she just told me be smart about the things I do and say mm-hmm. and just do what I like to do. Mm hmm. So, of course, that kind of brings up the question of, like, how does she feel with everything that has gone, been going on recently with you and the law? Um, she's glad I'm okay, you know, mm-hmm. things like that. But it's not really I could do about it. Not too much I could say, really. Right. And I saw that you had announced, like, your case is closed, so... Um, something like that, yeah. Something, something like that, yeah. Okay. Is that some? Is this something that you could speak on? Not, or? Well, I don't know. I have to consult my lawyer. She's not here right now, so I guess I won't really talk about it. Okay. Yeah. So with what it is that you can say or think that you can say, because there's a lot of stuff that's going out right now in the media, people like coming to assumptions, because I don't think anybody really knows what happened. Yeah. So is there anything that you could say to like clear up maybe something that you've seen in the media um, that people have been saying about your situation? I will say. I will say this. Um, learn the penis from the groin. I ain't get shot <laughs> in, my, in my penis. Yeah, because I'm not going to front. They were um, saying they didn't yeah. know if he was going to be able to have kids. <laughs> yeah, they, they just be <laughs> <laughs> trolls. But, yeah, that's one thing I will say. Um, and everything happens for a reason. You mm-hmm. know, um, the facts always come out. Whatever happens in the dark is going to come to the light. And that's what basically happened. Okay. Is there anything that you wish that you could change with the situation that happened? No, nah, I don't regret none in my life. In general? In general, yeah. So anything same goes for, for that. Yeah. Okay. So how do you feel, though? Because I feel like you you know, you know, were going up, mm-hmm. and then once that stuff kind of unfolded, the narrative kind of shifted when it came to you, and people were more so focused on what happened with that altercation than they were with your music. Do you agree? Um, well, I feel like no, no press is bad press, so mm-hmm. fuck it, you know, talk about me, talk about me. So it was like, I didn't really care what was being talked about, because I know it's going to happen, it's in the news, things mm-hmm. like that, but um, I'd rather just people stay facts, so like, you know, certain shit, I might get me a little upset, like, oh, they don't know what they're talking about, but I'm not going to mm-hmm. go back and forth, because I know what's really going. Mm-hmm. You just an outsider, but when you do see what's going on, you go, like, "Oh, I, I look stupid." So, when do you think we're gonna see what's going on? Since you can't talk about it too much, um, now. soon, real soon, yeah, soon. Okay, so I'm actually one more thing, and then we can move on. Like, okay. if there's, like, let's say, because I know you said that you've been seeing people say stuff, they haven't been talking yeah. facts. What's like the top things maybe that you've been seeing that's not facts? That you would just like to clear up. I know we already cleared up the difference between the penis and the groin. Mm-hmm. But is there anything else that you've been seeing people saying that you just want to, like, clear up? Um, Nah, that'd be really it. That's really all That's the it on the yeah, like, like, huh? I don't care about niggas calling me Cheddar Blue because I got Cheddar. <laughs> I got money. Why? why? That's, how I, that's how I use it. Like, you know, why, why would I don't they take offense to it. Because they try to say I shot myself. Mm. This didn't happen. But that's going into details. But Okay. Yeah. So how did you feel? Because I saw a video of, like, the cop, like, being rolled out at the hospital. Everybody was yeah. dapping him up and stuff. Uh-huh. When you saw that, like, how did how did you feel about that? <laughs> I won't say how I really felt, but <laughs> um, I'm glad he's okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's what we're going to say yeah. on that. All right. So I'm while glad he's okay. So while you were locked up, a lot of stuff was happening. That was kind of like we were at the height or at least like starting conversations about the drill music scene, kind of spilling into what was going on in the city. Mm-hmm. I know that you had a loss in your your friend group. I'm sorry yeah. for that. Like, how did you feel being locked up and kind of missing out on everything that was going on in the outside world? Um, I wasn't missing nothing. I'm not gonna say too much, but if you know, you oh, know. you was in tune. <laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> I won't say too much though. Uh-huh. <laughs> but um, I was. It, I didn't really feel a disconnect. I felt more so like glad I got away from the internet for a little minute. You know, mm-hmm. like a debrief. Realize who's really who. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. That. So you had like a lot of eye opening moments on the people that you was you yeah. had around you. Yeah. What was like the biggest thing when you came out that you was like that surprised you or shocked you? Um, I don't really think nothing really. Well, I was well. I was just all the news clips and things like that. That kind of was shocking. You know, it was. I knew shocking. one day I'd be on the news, but not for something like this. So yeah, it was kind of like wow, and like like more so the things they were saying, like you know the picture they painted. That was like a little bit shocking, but. Mm-hmm. And that kind of goes back to what I was saying. Like I feel like that was like the narrative for a long time. I know you said all press is good press, but. Uh-huh. Do you feel like after the stories were going out, like your name started going up? Do you feel like your music started going up after the whole situation? Um, yeah, I think I think it helped. Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah, I think it helped. Okay, so bringing it back to the music, you have one million views on Blue Bop, which is lit. Yes. So, did you think that song was gonna get as lit as it did? Um, yeah, I felt it. Yeah. But yeah, I kind of anticipated that. But I don't know, like you know. Sometimes things don't go as you think it will, but mm-hmm. I kind of felt like that song was going to do its numbers. And when it comes to the sample, because I know that's like a Cuddy Rank sample. Yeah. Did y'all clear that? Okay. All right. <laughs> so what are, your th- <laughs> like, what are your thoughts on that? Like, Because I know everybody is like, a lot of people are making music yes, using samples. samples yeah. And like, not a lot of people are clearing them. So, I feel like, um, do it. Until, like, you got to clear it, I guess I would say, like, you know, Mm -hmm. make the much, make as much as you can off of it Mm -hmm. until they, I guess, issue a lawsuit or issue something that they, you know? Yeah. Because it's like, what can you really do if they don't respond to you when you reach out to clear it? You're going to drop your music. And the music be hits. That's the crazy part. Like, it really be a pop. So it's like, they... If they if they got good listening to music, they're gonna understand and mm-hmm. just, you know clear it. It doesn't really take that much, I don't think, to connect with somebody and get right. a song cleared. Is there any songs that you would like to sample that you haven't gotten a chance to work on yet that you kind of plotting on? Um, I don't really got none in mind, but like a specific song. But I'm thinking about doing some some Jersey Club shit. Oh, okay, yeah. tapping into a new little market. Yeah. Think about doing something like that. Okay. Or do you fuck with because the, the Jersey and the Philly music is sounding oh, real yeah. similar. So oh, okay, that's that's. I what guess you're... yeah. I guess the Philly music. I guess it's it's well, hard to tell. Well, yeah, little, <laughs> I guess I guess, I guess, I guess it's, to say a little bit of both. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So do you think like we could expect a new sound because you've been sticking to the drill shit for, for yeah for, I yeah mean, I got some yeah got some oh you got some okay yeah. coming soon yeah. Okay, I got an EP okay. on the way. Be- EP on the way. So what can we expect from the EP? What kind of sounds you got going on on there? Is it strictly drill or are you switching nah, it up? Drill, pain, um, some other country stuff. Country? Yeah. Let me find out. Yeah, branching out. Wait, so how did you get there? What? <laughs> how did you get to um, country? Just connections, you know. Connect mm-hmm. with somebody in the UK. Okay. Um, That video is in the works, too. But yeah, that song is going to be on my EP. A couple of other things. We're here for the versatility. So you posted something real interesting not too long ago regarding your label and the situation that was going on over there. (laughs) Um, Do you care to elaborate on what exactly is going on? Um, That's another thing I got to speak to my lawyer about before I speak about. So I won't really get into detail about that. Okay, so you don't have to get into too much detail, but I'm going to ask you questions based on what you said, okay? Mm-hmm. So you said that you were told lies and BS by people who you thought were beside you. Yeah. And um, all I'll say about that is, um, how could I put this? i just say, um, just no just just really know people before you think you know them, I guess, mm-hmm. I'll say. Yeah. So, that goes for anything, though, like, not just music. That goes for anything. A friend you let in your circle, mm-hmm. or, you know, a lot of backdoor things happen, so mm-hmm. you got to just be so aware. So you, you navigating through the, the lies and deception, it sounds like. Yeah. But um, so what, what made you want to sign in the first place at such, like, an early time what was it that hooked you in um in the music game you gotta take risks signing is a risk 
and I took it. But was there anything that was laid out on the table that kind of incentivized it for you that made it made you feel like that was like the right move? Well, yeah, the money, of course, but um, like knowing, I guess, well, not knowing, but thinking like you know, when you get to that major label, you're gonna be able to branch off, meet new people, do different things. Mm-hmm. It's not all about just music. It's about like branching off to making money doing different things and right like that. and outside of what you what you've been experiencing lately do you feel like you've been able to benefit from being signed to your label uh, i guess you could say that yeah. yeah so you're still signed though yeah would you do it again if you had if you had a second chance because you you yeah, said no i said before. i don't regret none yeah you yeah. did say that so yeah. you would do it again yeah i'll do it again okay would you do anything differently yeah, certain things would be a little different, but like I'll do what? it again. Um, probably the steps I take before signing, after, you know, mm-hmm. a little bit, things like that, you know. Mm-hmm. So do you feel like when it comes to, like, drill music, because I feel like a lot of labels are, like, scouting drill oh. artists. Do you feel like they're doing it for be, the for the best of the artists, or do you feel like it's just, like, it's hot right now, so? Oh, I guess... I guess it really depends on who you are, because I would say like, you know, everybody right now got a million views. Mm-hmm. So I guess it's really about like if they doing it based on like your consistency on your views, things mm-hmm. like that. They might think you got potential. Mm-hmm. You know, but I feel like if you got like one hit wonder, then they might just be doing it thinking you might be able to have another chance at a one hit. So, so what do you think it was for you? Um. I think they seen the potential in me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, shout out my nigga set the trend. Um, shout out set the trend. Guys. We made movies and mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. after after doing that, you know, things got better for the both of us. Right. So it's funny that you boy up set the trend because I was gonna ask. So you, I think it was no ozone. You had started the song off like. I'm not making no more Joe songs. <laughs> yeah, no. And then you no continued. You went on. No more diss tracks. I think, I think we were supposed to um tell the engineer, cut that out. But <laughs> <laughs> it's all <laughs> good. All that shit. <laughs> but it was still good. on there. I'm, yeah. So, like, what made you in that moment say, like, did you really think that you were done or you was just talking your shit? Nah, yeah. I think that was the one, like, I thought that was going to be like, all right, just shut these niggas up. But, you know, niggas always got a response for everything. So, you know. The response is gonna keep coming. I mean, but you've been slowing down though, cause you was not yeah. only, you wasn't only responding in the music, but you was on live. You was talking your shit. Yeah, it like, was happening in real time too. Cause a lot of people think like I don't know, they don't know. Like I really cut ass. You're gonna be mad. <laughs> You're gonna try to join my live and think you something sweet and shit gonna go spicy for you. You're gonna be so, upset. Is it is it pure beef or is it kind of like a, a sense of entertainment to you too? I ain't gonna lie. I, Half of the people that Jack, they really got beef for me. I just be laughing at like I like it. Just be jokes to me. Mm-hmm. Bare entertainment, like you said, yeah. It be jokes most of the time. Really? Cause I I wonder sometimes how much of like the Bronx drill shit really spills into like everyday life. Um, I can't really go into that, but oh my god, what can you go into? Cause that's, <laughs> that's, that's a little. That's a little. That's a little. I don't know, but. I don't, what was your question again? I was just saying, like, I wonder sometimes, like, how much of it really spills out into actual life. Because I've been seeing it online. Oh, I hear it, it just, in the songs. I guess like, if you if you really on that or not, you know? Some people just rapping their man's life. Other niggas is rapping what they doing. So mm-hmm. it really just, if you on that or not, you know? Is Cebu really on that? Sound nah, I'm not. <laughs> that was a good, a good answer. A good answer. All right. So even despite the beef, it seems like you know you collabing, you doing your thing. Even when it comes to Brooklyn artists, because you did the Christmas Carol song yeah. with Two Six, and that was lit. People were really saying like they weren't expecting for y'all to collab together, but like they kind of want more. That's what I'm getting. Nah, yeah. Um, me and Bro are supposed to do something else. Um. I got a track with another Brooklyn artist, Humble G's. Okay. Um, I, don't, I ain't really branch. Nah, I ain't really do nothing else with nobody else from Brooklyn. How did the collab with Two Six come about? Um, you know he did the song with K and shit, but I've been fucking with his music. Like, you mm-hmm. know he be talking. 
So I was just like, hit him up, see. Mm-hmm. And we ended up making a song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what have, like, how has it been? Because I know that K is, like, really kind of, I don't want to say, like, the center of it all, but, like, usually when it comes to, like, most of the, most of your friend group, I would say, his name always comes up. How has it been, like, since he's been locked up and he's kind of, like, not physically in the picture right now? Has there been any difference between, like, the way that y'all operate? Nah. No? Mm-mm. Shit's still the same. Still the same. Just yeah, free him. him. Yeah. Home. You see, for my son, still going viral and shit. Of course, of course. Okay, so um, back to Christmas, the Christmas Carol. Sorry, uh-huh. that was just a quick little pivot. But confused as to where did Christmas drill even come from? <laughs> like, I, I think we was the only people to do it that last year too. I don't think nobody else did no no Christmas sample. Yeah, I remember seeing seeing that. Yeah, that, I feel like that shit should have went more crazy. But two six ain't want to come out his comfort zone. He ain't want to put on um, Santa suits. I'm weak. So y'all was about to have Santa suits for it in the video? Yeah, he ain't want to <laughs> do it. I was trying to have Santa, Santa I mean, suits, the Grinch, all this, that. There's always this year. Yeah. So we boosting the creativity. And that's so that's the thing. So w- would you jack that y'all started that? Um, If people, well, everything has happened before, but I guess with the drill, we could say, yeah, we started yeah. it. If people start doing it this year, yeah. Mm-hmm. And whose idea was it? Did y'all already have the beat and y'all just hopped on it? Or I did think, y'all, like... I don't even know, to be honest. It was so long ago. hmm I mean, it wasn't that long ago. Don't drag it. That was like six, seven months. That, that's right around the corner. But, okay, I know a lot has happened yeah, since that's, then, so... That, I, I know, get it. I we get probably it. had the beat for like a month before. Uh-huh. So, yeah. I don't really know how it came about. But, I mean, overall, like, even looking at your, um, what's it called, your YouTube channel, like, you've been very consistent. Even since then, I feel like you've been dropping basically every month, something every month, it seems like. On yeah, YouTube, I, I've been trying to drop, like, once a week, once every two weeks, you know. And that's but a I lot. Wanna, I want to overdrop, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think that, like, dropping more music kind of impacts the quality of what you're putting out? or? Nah. Well, if you got bars, you got bars, but. So if you can like you can make a thousand songs, mm-hmm. if they sound different, they gonna work. But I feel like sometimes you give you don't give your fans a time you don't give your fans a chance mm-hmm. to really keep you in the song and get to like it before you drop another one. Right. It starts to fuck up, like because if you if you just drop, let's say you dropped this song last week, it's doing it got five hundred k in a week. Mm-hmm. That that means obviously that song they want to yeah, yeah they wanted to keep going. Mm-hmm. But you drop another one now, they like, oh shit, he just dropped again. They are gonna stop viewing that one now. That view slows down. Yeah, now they on the next uh-huh. one. So where would you say is like the sweet spot for like when? Because I know you say you've been trying to post like every two weeks or so. Like, yeah, I feel like think? I feel like the two week mark gives uh, everybody a chance to really like keep going. Mm-hmm. And by two weeks, you'll feel like in two weeks you'll see if your song is really gonna blow or not. I feel mm-hmm. like. Well, songs can always blow later on, but, like, you know, the first two weeks to the month is when you really see. And it's interesting that you say that because I feel like, especially lately, now that we have, like, TikTok and people are, like, yeah. refinding songs, yeah. I feel like we've found that there's, like, so many old songs that have been, like, coming back into the picture yeah. that people are, like, now getting put onto. Do you feel like there's any songs that you've made that have been, like, kind of, like, overlooked that, like, slept on that people don't give, I guess, the attention that you thought it would get? Um... The one, the the, I feel like one of my best verses to me, mm-hmm. this shit, the not a this shit that I dropped was set. Okay, I feel like I don't know. I feel like the quality of the video wasn't as good as it was. I thought it was gonna be, mm-hmm. and that kind of fuck with the views. Cause like every every video, me and set guys like we do a whole bunch of shit in it. So it's like, mm-hmm. yeah. How did y'all meet? From the same hood. Oh, so y'all yeah. just like grew up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, um. So in your, in Fresh Home, one of like the bar main bars that stuck out to me was you said all the op bitches be trying to fuck. Yeah, <laughs> is that true? <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't lie in my music. So that's true. Thank yeah. Uh huh. Shout out y'all. Not shout. Not giving them a <laughs> shout out. <laughs> so how how is that like? Would you? Would you fuck with it? Bitches. Um. 
Yeah, life goes on. Life goes on. Yeah. So that's a yes. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you saying it like that? Because <laughs> that's like it's not a wood for me. Oh, it's a that's some regular have shit. Been yeah, here, done that. yeah, that's some regular shit. Okay, how is it though? Like dating? Do you like? Are you actively dating? Yeah, I guess. You guess. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm out there. Okay, and like when it comes to dating, do you date like? Yeah. Uh-huh. Damn! What? <laughs> Yikes. Oh shit! <laughs> Y'all only see one side of the camera, but if there's anything you oh, can get shit. from what's going on, it's so. oh man. So <laughs> that was funny. Are you so? Are you dating like women your age or younger? Because like I personally, if I'm being honest, don't know if. 16 year old me would have been able to keep up with everything y'all got going on. I really don't think so. Nah, I ain't gonna lie. I don't like people my age. I don't like girls my age. Older? Yeah. Yeah, I need I need you to have a crib. A so, crib is crazy. What? Because anything I provide, I feel like you should be able to provide too. So you providing a crib? Yeah, I could do all that. Crib, food. So food. what's the oldest? Who's the, like, what's the oldest woman that you've ever dated? I don't want to get nobody in trouble. How how you getting them in trouble if you're I'm not saying age. names? Oh, names. I. I'm right. not asking who. You're right. I like milfs. That's Ooh. what I'm say. Have you ever fucked with somebody who's like close in age to their sons or daughters? Huh? Because you're young. You oh, say you like, like if they got a kid that's my age. Yeah. Um, I don't recall. Okay. Well, at least that's that's all right. But that's the. Mm. <laughs> nah, yeah, that's kind of crazy. Somebody, somebody, somebody <laughs> um, so, do you feel like, realistically speaking, though, do you feel like there are ever times that you think you're growing up too fast? Because it's a lot going on. Like, it's- um, nah, I just take everything day by day. I don't. I never try to like overdo myself because I feel like um, it's an age for everything. You know, I want to be in my thirties, be able to still have fun. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do everything now. And right. Then, be like, damn, what do I do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And um, in terms of, like, next steps, what's what's next for C-Blue? What are you looking forward to? Um, I don't even know right now. I can't really tell you. You don't know. Nah, I can't really tell you, to be honest. Not that right. I know you got the EP coming out, so that's one thing yeah. that we could look forward to. Um. Any exciting collabs that you're working on? Um, right now, I got a couple that I'm working on. Um, with um, Millie's, um, trying to get something in with Dusty. Okay. And a couple of other people. Yeah. And who's like who's on your playlist right now? Like who are you listening to? If you had to name top five and not including your friends. I top five, no cap. Rallo Rodriguez. Oh wow, that's interesting. Um, Jack Boy. Young Boy. What's that for? Mm-hmm. Fifth um, um, one. I don't know. Myself. See, I wanted to see who you was going to say for the fifth one because I know that you said yeah. a couple times Lil Pump was your inspiration. Yeah, I stopped listening to him. Though. So what was uh, that uh, about? Like, you stopped listening to nah, him? Nah, like, I ain't, like, he don't really drop new music. Well, he drops new music, but none mm-hmm. that really catch my attention like that no more. But. And nobody that you named, I think, captures, like, the same sound that he does. So what was it about him in the first place that inspired you to make music? He was just creative. Different, I feel like I don't know. Mm-hmm. He so was he, lit. So you saw something in him that you felt like you could bring out. Yeah, he lit. Uh huh. What's what's one like misconception that you feel like people may have of you? Um, people that don't know you. That I'm a cop shooter. <laughs> what? That's, okay, that's, so that's uh, a misconception. Yeah, that's that's okay. You know. If you see me in another state on the news, that's probably why you see me. So it's like, you know, Mm -hmm. everybody, that's what everybody got in their head with that. Okay, so we clear in the air here, coming from your own mouth. But as you said, the facts will come out. Mm -hmm. The truth will come to light. Yes. So we'll soon know. So is there anything else that you would like to talk about before we wrap this up? Anything that you would like the people to know? 
Um, shout out everybody. For me. Shout out my fans, um, my loved ones, um, people on my team. Niggas in the background, you can't see them right now. Um, yeah. That's really it. Okay. Well, thank you again for coming. No problem. And for opening up. And we look forward to seeing. And congratulations again for being Mr. Youngest in Charge. Hello. Yes. Thank <laughs> we you. We almost done. We thank almost you, done. You. So shout out um, your Instagram, um, everything that you got. Cblue underscore 180 is my Instagram. Um, yeah, go stream my music, things like that. Running my views up on YouTube. I soon drop another video, and one more thing: um, mm -hmm. believe half of what you see and none of what they tell you. Yeah, that's really it. See blue out. <laughs> that's it.